Hi, this is Kate from Minute Earth. Let's find some cat memes. This site looks good. Yeah, there's some funny kiddos and some great cattos on here. But, well, hmm, the pickings are definitely getting slimmer. Maybe we should try another site. But that means we have to find another site. And we're already here, so should we stay or should we go? Well, it turns out that online, we forage for information just as, say, a chickadee forages for fruit. It has to choose which tree to visit and decide how long to nom there before abandoning it and finding another. Ecologists already have all sorts of models to describe how animals forage. And it turns out that one of these models, which explains how animals move between patches of food, also predicts how humans move between websites. Both you and the chickadee will forage in one place until the rate of reward you're getting there drops below what you think you're likely to get elsewhere. This calculation is subconscious, of course. You'll just notice the tree is getting bare and move on. But you're actually spending your time and energy in a way that gets you as much reward as possible. And that's something foraging animals and humans do all the time. For instance, we've found that chipmunks that take longer seed-gathering trips bring back bigger hauls than those that take short ones. That makes sense. It's only worth spending lots of resources if you can score big. And a study of more than 400 robberies in the Netherlands found that the farther burglars travel to commit their crimes, the more expensive their loot tends to be. Researchers have even found that the longer we search for a romantic partner, the more likely that relationship is to last. Perhaps a bigger investment leads to a better payoff. We probably optimize like animals because we are animals. And in fact, we share critical decision-making circuitry. For instance, monkeys have special neurons that seem to track the rate of reward the monkey is getting in a patch. When it drops too low, the neurons send an electrical signal to the monkey, who switches to a new patch. We also have these neurons, and there's evidence to suggest that lots of other animals do too. They were likely so critical to making good food-finding trade-offs in the distant past that they were passed on over lots of generations. This kind of shared machinery may help explain why we behave like our non-human kin. Of course, most of us humans now find ourselves evaluating how fruitful websites are much more often than how fruitful fruit trees are. And the stakes of wasting your time on dumb cat memes are far lower than wasting your time searching for sustenance. But it's not just web surfing. At what point do you move on from a lame TV show? Or ditch the long line at the DMV? Or give up on a job? Or even a relationship that you're not that into? It turns out that the constraints and the underlying machinery that guide us in these everyday scenarios are likely the same as those that guide animals. Which means that deep inside, we're all a little bird-brained. This video is sponsored by the University of Minnesota, where students, faculty, and staff across all fields of study are working to solve the grand challenges facing society. One of these challenges is enhancing individual and community capacity for a changing world so that we can help people make good choices, like staying healthy in an ever-changing environment. Ben Hayden in the Department of Neuroscience studies the biological mechanisms, like reward-tracking neurons, that we use to evaluate choices. And Dave Stevens in the Department of Ecology, Evolution, and Behavior investigates behaviors like foraging from an evolutionary standpoint to help us understand the broad forces that have shaped our decision-making process. Thanks, University of Minnesota. 